Yeah. And uh, here we go. Hey, everybody, and welcome to a live show here on Twitch. And if you're watching this uh, a little bit later, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm here with David Brodeur from Locked In Loading. What's up, man? Hey, guys. How's it going? What's up, Nick? Good, good to see you. Thanks for uh, taking some time joining us here on uh, on the live show. Heck, yeah. Can't wait. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on um, with with you for sure. You've been posting like uh, some amazing stuff over at Locked and Loading, and I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about that. You also, I just heard you have a brand new reel out. Is that just true? Just release it fresh off. Ooh. Hot. Ready All right. to we, go. We may have to watch that. We may have some questions uh, from the reel as well once we get to that. Cool. Uh, but one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you is, um, you know, I've... I came from After Effects as as an animator. I, I started animating in, in After Effects, and when I got to Cinema 4D, one of the things I opened up and immediately closed was the timeline inside of Cinema 4D. And uh, you seem to be much more comfortable and, and making some really cool stuff. So I think the idea today is to talk about animation, how you got started with animating in Cinema 4D, and also how you incorporate it into some of your work. Um, does that sound all right? Yeah, that sounds awesome. Dude, you're the man. But first I wanted to ask, you know, kind of the question I always ask everybody. My, I'm so interested in how people get started in a job like this. What's what's kind of get us to this point? How did you end up in your career doing what you do? And maybe we should start by saying, tell us a little bit about what you do now. Um, you know, give us give us some of the work that you've been doing lately. And then also kind of bring us up, to, you know, a short five minute uh, talk about how you got to this point in your career. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now I'm running my own freelance firm. And so I, I'm just taking on, you know, client jobs directly remotely out of uh, my place here in Florida. So um, that's kind of like one of my main things. The other thing, I'm also an animation professor at uh, Ringling College of Art and Design. So those are what I'm like doing right now. Um, but then if we kind of rewind it here, uh, my background is in graphic design. And I feel like I feel like it's a pretty common thing for Anyone that's around my age bracket in the motion design industry that like none of us, there was like no motion design major. Like it was kind of, we're creating it as we're going, you know? Um, so I, I feel like it's a lot of our backgrounds are in other things. It's rare that to meet lots of people in the industry that are like, yeah, my background's in motion design. It's like, no, no one's like that, you know? Um, so it kind of happened uh, through college. I was similar to you, Nick, though, where, you know, I'd open up the timeline. I'm like, what is this? And I close out of it and be like, yeah, I'm not going to do that anymore. And just uh, right click on my keyframes and say, uh, you know, throw some easy ease on there and, and whatever. And I'm like, yeah, that's good. It's like super afraid of it. Um, but anywho, you know, going through college, uh, probably around my junior year, I, I realized that um, I, I wanted to start animating. And so we had After Effects available, but no one was there to kind of like teach it or anything. Um, so I just started picking it up, going through that. And then um, and then by um, my senior year, uh, I was doing the the old trick where you offset one pixel in Z space and After Effects to try to give things like fake depth, you know? And so all my type like would have like a hundred layers and I'm like, nice, you know, <laughs> and it was ridiculous. I remember that and, trick. Uh, yeah, until I got to the point where I'm like, all right, I just, I got to stop this. I need to pick up a, a 3D program. Uh, and then from there, it was kind of that self-learning thing again. And so I never really had someone that was able to sit me down when I was working and be like, These, this is how you animate. This is really how you get in there and get control of it. And, um, and, and so I started working on client projects, right? So I graduated working in a studio, working with great animators, people that have been doing it for years. Um, and most of them self-taught or, you know, taught in a different way. And, uh, you know, and everyone's just kind of figuring stuff out on their own, more or less. And one project that stuck out to me in particular, uh, it, it was not like a special project or anything like that. It was actually for a lottery thing. And there was a, a lottery ball that came dropped in on the screen. It was like an end tag thing. Um, and I was like, well, what am I, how am I going to do this? dynamics right of course if i'm having a, a like a sphere drop is i'm just gonna click on the dynamics button so i did and i was like i was happy with it it's like this looks great and so we played for the client and they're like yeah it just it seems to be the ball seems to be like kind of like slow motion feeling or something like that and i'm like oh okay sure i'll tweak that so i go back in 
and I mess with the gravity, right? Or, and, and, or, or like initial velocity or whatever. I started messing with all these little buttons to make it go faster. But then when I did that, it bounced differently. I couldn't get it to resolve right. It would start to roll left and right off the screen. And, uh, and so like I, I made a cylinder and I dropped the ball into a cylinder, turned the cyl cylinder off so you couldn't see the visibility, but made it dynamic so the ball didn't roll after it landed. And so long story short, I'm like tweaking this thing for hours in dynamics, all because I didn't know one of the most basic things to keyframe. And the, it, it just went off in my head at that moment. I'm like, I, I, I can't call myself an anim animator anymore if I don't know how to control this by hand. And so it was amazing though how long I was able to go using delay effectors and dynamics and all these other tools and not really know how to animate, you know? And um, I, I went for a long time and fooled a lot of people. Uh, but the problem was the minute I had to go in and change something, that's kind of when it all fell apart for me. So, uh, so yeah, so, I mean, that was, that's kind of my launch into my love for animation. And then once I, uh, I really got down these principles, like I, I just knew them, uh, I, I knew them inside and out, started applying them to client projects. The next project that I applied them to, the client came back on the first pass, uh, on the animatic and said, we love it. And I'm like, wait, sorry, I can't, I can't hear you. Did you just say you, you, you loved it? Like that's you mean it. No, no changes, no changes. Yeah. And they're like, no, yeah, it's perfect. You, why don't you just start on the uh, lighting and texturing now? And I'm like, sweet, the animation principles and learning how to get in the F curve editor and the graph editor, like totally saved me. And I like left that day from work and I was like, so happy. I was like, oh, that's what I've been missing. Yeah. I could relate to that. It's, you know, as somebody that relies on either dynamics or MoGraph effectors to animate almost everything I do or signal, right? That's another re like, that's a reason we, we built signal too, is like, how, how do we look at the timeline and go and really dig into it? And it's almost like, you know, for, for a lot of things I use signal, but if, if you want it to be more complicated, right? If you want to make a bouncing animation, if you want to make um, you know, a, a logo spin around real slow and then wiggle at the end, you know, these really specific things, you have to start to learn the, the, the timeline. And I, and I love your idea of the dynamics too. So many people ask that question. They're like, the dynamic simulation looks great. Everything's falling. But then at the very end, I want this one quarter in the simulation to like rotate a little bit more and, and land face up. Is there a way to do that? And there's so, you know, and ultimately the answer is you got to, I think you got to keyframe it. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, and, and dynamics are just so much fun and, and it's just so easy to kind of click it and, and be happy with it, especially if you're just working on personal stuff. Um, but the minute you need to like do those, those client projects and get those changes, that's when it's like, oh man, I, I need to learn how to hand keyframe stuff. So, well, you talked about the principles of animation and I guess now is as good as any time to bring up the, the course that you're uh, going to be starting this week. It actually starts this Monday, right? Yeah. Um, so David teaches an animation fundamentals course where he goes into the principles of animation and shows you not only how to start to animate in Cinema 4D, but also how to give a little bit of character to your logos and your circles and all the stuff that you're animating. So he's he kind of breaks that stuff down. How did you how did you go about learning these principles when you first got started? Because I think there's a difference between just learning how to keyframe technically. And then some of these animation principles that have that have been used in animation for uh, over a hundred years now. So, how did you come about the the animation principles, and how have they affected your work? I think uh, again, just like everything else that I've done to get to where I'm at, I've kind of gone about it in the discovery way, not like intentionally coming across anything, like coming across something because my animation looks like crap. Why? Why does my animation look so bad? And and so I'd start looking at other artists and their animation. I'm like, okay, why does their animation look so good? And I'd break it down. I'm like, okay, he moves this object from point A to point B, right? And when it gets to point B, it doesn't just stop at that location. It goes past it and goes past it again and then comes back and lands. And, and I was like, cool, I'll 
I'll do that. And so I started doing that. And then down the road, so so like I didn't even know how to describe that. That's how I would describe it. You know, it'll land, it'll go past and come back and forth. And then I'm like starting to research more. And I'm like, oh, that's called follow through, overshoot, follow through, overlap, you know. And, and then I'm like, okay, well, maybe there's a more specific curve. Like, can I get this actually like accurate? Like, is there an accurate curve to this? So I'm not just like, okay, I'll go four frames down and then, uh, and move it here and then four frames this way and then move it here again. Um, is there a curve that, that makes this perfect, you know? Um, cause the animation principles are like a, a science. It's kind of crazy. Uh, once you like dive into it and start looking at the, the 12 principles and, and what the Walt Disney company did for those is like, oh my gosh, these guys are geniuses. Like they've literally established rules for animation that are going to stand the test of time, you know, like they're going to be here forever, you know, and that's like pretty incredible. And so, and, and, and Nick, you talk about this all the time too. And I repeat it constantly. And it's like, learn the things in design that, that never change. And the same things with animation, learn these things because these are the hardest things to learn. Um, if you're working in the studio, your creative director or, or even another coworker, for instance, they're not really going to have the time to come over to you and be like, all right, this is, these are the animation principles and this is how you become a good animator. And, and here's the, the fundamentals of design and this is how you do it. Like they're not going to have that time. They're going to be able to come over and be like, yeah, this is where this button is or this button and click this. So here's a navigation. And like, that's easy. Right. And they're not going to be able to sit down and teach those things. So you know, I kind of discover them on my own, but then it's just taking a ton of practice and a ton of time to, to learn those. And I feel like I'm definitely haven't mastered them and, and, and it, but it's all about like getting excited about it and doing them over and over and over again. And to the point where, uh, you can start just doing it by how it visually looks and you're like, Whoa, that's great. And, and, and that's kind of the, the, like where I'm at now, you know, where you can start to make something and, and, and do those curves. I remember when, uh, w one of the first couple projects I got on was working with a, a veteran artist. Um, his name is, uh, Sam Gearsomchuk. He, uh, he's a Chicago artist, 3d artist. And he took one of my files one time, had it maybe for two, three minutes, uh, before he exported it out. And I saw it and I was like, that's not my, like, that's not my animation. That looks so good. How did you take that for three minutes and make it look amazing? Um, <laughs> And, uh, and he started showing me and he was just messing with the, the graph editor and the F curve editor. And I'm like, oh man, I, I've got so much to learn. I think that's the moment too. Cause I, I, I think a lot of us, me included, I'll, I'll speak for myself. I, I'll start to play with the, the bottom kind of keyframe maker in cinema, that, that real simple timeline, um, at the bottom. Yeah. And, and I understand the concepts of like opening that up and, and setting those things, but you're, you know, explain the difference between just animating in that little bar and then opening up the curve editor and some of the things that you have, you know, power over once you start learning um, actu actually how these curves work and how the keyframes work. For sure. Yeah. I mean, wow, there's such a big difference, though, between just the timeline making keyframes in cinema and jumping into the F curve editor. It's like night and day difference because every time you make a keyframe inside of Cinema 4D, it automatically puts an ease on keyframes. And After Effects is the opposite. Every time you make a keyframe, it makes them linear. And so, you know, anything typically default, especially when it comes to an artistic interpretation of something, like that default thing is supposed to be changed. And we talk about it a lot or with just cameras, right? It's like, if you just drop and drag a camera into your scene and whatever the default focal length is, go with that. It's like, whoa, no, that's like, there's a very artistic reason of choosing these things. And so the same thing goes with like the F-curve editor. Um, and so you jump in there and they already have these built-in eases. Um, and in, in with animation specifically, you really, animation is supposed to evoke emotion, you know, just based on movement. And that's pretty amazing. And, and, and changing up the speeds and varying speeds and having something moving fast and then drifting slow. And, 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 and these are all timeline features, you know, like exponential curves, like something that maybe that starts out quick and then goes right into a nice little ease. Right. And, and changes those speeds up, slowing, slowing movement down and speeding them up and going back and forth like that. 
Um, and, and so if you don't jump into the F curve out there, you're, everything for you is just going to have the same timing, you know, and, and it's going to be boring and people are going to lose interest in that. Yeah. I think, um, that transition and, and you know, I gotta, I gotta say like in after effects, I, I started to apply these things. I started to learn and apply the principles of animation, these ease, these super ease curves. And I, I got a lot better at you know, animating in After Effects because there was that speed graph editor that's kind of simplified things for me. And, you know, and it, and it just, it took a lot of years to figure that out. And, and, you know, if, if there's somebody out there that has worked in After Effects like me, or maybe just have never messed with the timeline and they open it and they see how complex it could be, and maybe you're a little bit scared of it, is there, is there anything we can say to them to say like, this is possible because even, even me coming from After Effects, knowing how keyframes work, knowing how speed curves work, open up the the After Effects uh, editor, curve editor, and I'm like, I need I need to go home. Yeah, I need to leave. Like, what 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 is there to maybe get people started with using this stuff? Well, I, I've just seen such great results just from. Uh, our animation class alone uh, of, of, for instance, of a really good designer, really good designer artist coming in, a little bit of 3D experience, but not really any background in animation. And so you look at the F-curve editor and instantly you're, you're kind of frightened. And those have been like my, some of my favorite success stories out of this course is, are, are those people, those people that have this strong design fundamental ability and, and just lack that confidence to, to like animate and they're afraid. Um, but it's kind of a big jump right now. A lot of 2D artists um, and 3D artists, just designers are, are trying to go to that next step. And, uh, and when, I, when I work with them and, and we go through that timeline and we break down the projects and I go in and I start pulling, it's like, it's like you're there, don't, don't be timid. Like it, it, it's almost like a painting. Like I, I, I'm never worried when I'm painting something because I'm like, it's just paint. You can always paint over it, you know? And it's the same thing with the, the F curve editor. It's like, don't be afraid to go in there and pull things around and see how that changes the, the, the feel and the mood of your piece. Like you can't, you can't mess it up, you know, and if you do, it's not permanent. And, and so uh, just kind of that exploration, don't be afraid to explore. I feel like it's so easy for us to explore with tools, but when it comes to animation, you know, there's a lot more finesse that's involved. And we, we tend to like pull back and just say, okay, that's, that's kind of good enough. I took it that far and, and I'll move on and focus on something else. So exploration. Yeah. That's great advice. Get in there and, and mess it up. You're not going to break anything. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I forget that all the time. You know, when I, when I put a, a, a nail in the wall to hang a photo, I'll measure 80 times because I know there's no undo button here, but yeah. I, I bring that, sometimes I'll bring that principle into software and be like, ah, I don't want to break it. But that you're right. If we, you know, if we approach it with the idea that we're just experimenting, I think that's, uh, I, I, I think that's really a, a good way to approach it. Yeah. Well, I wanted to get to some of your work. I wanted to check out your new reel, and um, uh, but people are asking about the course already. I'm gonna actually put it in the chat room here. And if you're watching this later, I'll put it down in the description and everything. Uh, David's next course uh, is starting. This Monday, we're going to start to get everybody in. And if you've been looking at adding keyframing and animation to your Cinema 4D workflow, uh, definitely check it out. We've had over 200 students go through this course in the last year, and including some people that are here, uh, like Red J. Red J had a, a great comment up here. He said, once you know the principles of animation, uh, Signal actually becomes even more powerful as well. Yeah. Because we have, we have some agree. curve editing in there. So, um, yeah, we have... Uh, some uh, students that have already been through the course. So if anybody has questions for them, I'm sure somebody like uh, John would love to uh, talk about his experience. Uh, Red J in the chat room here. So thanks to everybody showing up. Uh, Exponential Design said Exponential Curves. Uh, I put the trademark logo on there, which which means we can't use that anymore. But I love <laughs> I love the Exponential Curve, man. That yeah. um, that's actually one of the uh, tips I I that is in this course is one of my favorite curves that I'll use when I, when I animate. Um, and, uh, it's, it's definitely similar to an exponential curve. Yep. Um, but yeah, uh, we're going to answer your questions in the chat room here. If you guys have any questions about, uh, what David's been up to or any, any questions about the course, we would love to have you in there. If you can make it, it runs for six weeks starting next, um, 
Monday. And then the live shows that you do, this this was um, something that we talked about when we started building this course, was getting these live shows in there. Can you describe a little bit about what happens during the live shows in, inside the course? Yeah, the live shows are, are some of my favorite part of the course. And and, and we hold these uh, every, every single week. And, and it's just kind of like an open discussion. And I take a look at the work that was done that week and, uh, and, and all the projects, right? And kind of give uh, some feedback on everyone's stuff. And then we go in, though, and dive into a couple more specific ones. Uh, like randomly selected ones each week and uh, and we dive into these and go into the f-curve editor and see how we can improve it and what techniques we can do um, to improve that individual artist project um, but not only that I mean we, we it's really hard to talk about animation and not mention anything about design because we also uh, have lessons about camera animations as well and so so you know some of the critique will involve you know composition and 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 color theory and stuff like that we we kind of mix it up so the live shows kind of break all that down um and then on top of that um you know if i'm working on something i'm like all right like i want to like i'm going to show this you know i'm going to show the process in which i'm doing something right now like and it, typically there it's not like available like so if no one else sees it it's just kind of us hanging out in this this kind of open chat and uh and i'm like you know if anyone ever wants to see how i make something i always show that stuff too um but but yeah it's like it's open chat and if i'm using different software so so the last class we had, I was right in the middle of playing with World Machine. And I was like, <clears throat> like, why don't we just open up World Machine? And I'll just show you some of the pros of it, some of the cons, just like me working with it and like and what I think about it as I'm as I'm like discovering this myself. So I don't know. The live shows, um, the, there's a lot that we kind of do in them, but the really specifically, they're they're for giving uh, all the other artists uh, some feedback on their work and then diving into a few projects and really breaking those down. Uh, and showing how to improve something that's already been created. So that's, uh, I mean, I hear such great feedback from those live shows. We have, we even have people here in the chat room that uh, are are saying what they've learned in some of these shows. Like, um, it, it's in green, so I got to highlight it to read this here. Lasso, Jeb, what's up? Uh, it says the live shows to break down projects and critique were the best part. He says so. That's really cool. Uh, I'm glad we include those. Um, in in the in the uh, training, so yeah, check it out. I, I I'll put a link here. Um, we, I see some more good questions here from you guys about um, how much time per week. That that's actually a pretty good question. We could probably answer right now. Um, we have a couple people asking, kind of roughly, what's the time commitment if somebody wants to join this course to get the most out of it? What do you think the time commitment is as far as the six weeks of of training plus the live shows and all this stuff? Yeah, so the the live shows every week are an hour. The lessons. Uh, range from from like you know anywhere from two to four hours somewhere in there. Um, my thing is this like uh, I, you know so just if you just look at just watching stuff and not actually creating, you know you you can talk you know four or five hours a, a week just from that that alone, um, and that's not you creating anything. So I'd say I'd say at least double that right to to get something. And something I really push is like let's not just make like do these lessons and make something just to achieve like the requirements of the lesson. Like that's not fun, you know, like fine, we're learning something. But um, my big thing is like, don't ever make anything or don't follow any kind of training um, and not have a final result to walk away with that you can put on your portfolio or in your reel or on your website or whatever. Right. It's like you, you just spent, you know, 10 hours working on something and, um, and you achieved a technique or a principle, but if it doesn't look good, then, you, you know, it's not a waste, but like you had all this time spent in. So, so I really encourage people to like put m as much time in as possible, but I don't know, it, did, did I kind of give an answer there? Yeah, I think it makes sense. You know, it, you, you get, you, you always get what you put into it as energy, it seems like, and that goes for any amount of training. Um, but I think that helps like knowing how much visual like stuff you need to watch per week and then basically at least double that um, to to add, you know, to, to create the homework and to do the steps and all that stuff. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jake in the chat room says, if you do nothing, nothing will happen. Um, there's also that line about, you know, um, y y y when when the when the student is ready, the teacher will arrive, you know, and, yeah. and it's you kind of have to be ready to learn and like engaged with your work or else. You know, you can't you can't just 
uh, watch the videos and like close your eyes and fall asleep with the iPad under your pillow. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. But, and um, we haven't gotten any, any artists that come in like that yet. So that's kind of a bonus, you know, like no one's like come in and been like, eh, I'm just going to kind of do just and watch. Whatever get by. <laughs> it's like, it's not middle school or high school anymore. Like no, <laughs> no one feels like that about like the, our industry and what we do. Everyone like jumps in and is like, equally as passionate and like when i come in i'm like just as passionate about like your work as i am about my own and uh and i'm like that excited to see them like every week i'm like oh man like the the night before i'm like starting to watch them I'm like oh man the, the live show tomorrow is gonna be great i can't wait to go over this stuff so yeah i mean everyone seems to be doing pretty pretty darn good with uh in my course so yeah it's been really cool to see the feedback from um over 200 students now i think it's 220 or more that have gone through the course and uh, we always ask for everyone's feedback we get really really great feedback from everybody and um uh just excited to get this course starting again is the first one of this year so uh yes. I'm excited to uh so get this going and yeah and i'll put the link in here again if you guys want to join us um it's getting started this monday and then the first live show will be a week from today around the same time you do the show like in the afternoon right yeah 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 exactly Yep. And uh, so I hope to see you there. You can learn more about it uh, with that link there. And um, yeah, and then let us know if you guys have any questions here as well. So I wanted to show uh, a little bit from, uh, you know, of David's work, you know, um, not only stuff that you've been working on with with the with the renders and all the locked and loading stuff on Instagram, but also uh, you just finished a new reel. So I wanted to uh, yes. I wanted to, to to check it out. I like you literally uploaded it today, right? Yeah, I, I, like maybe an hour or two ago. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me let me see if I can do this. We got to switch up the screen here a little bit, and also I'm gonna add, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen with you, David, so that you can see what the heck we're watching. Cool. And that way, um, Ooh, there I am. Hey, there you are. <laughs> that way, that way, it might make a little bit more sense. So let's pull this up here. Um, so first of all. Uh, here, let's check out your Behance page. People can kind of get a flavor for what you've been working on recently. If you've seen this stuff on Instagram, his locked and loading um, uh, on Instagram has been going crazy. How many followers are you up to now? Uh, I think 74. 74,000. 74, oh, 74,000. Yeah. <laughs> 74. <laughs> yeah, we're like, wah, wah. <laughs> um, all right, here's, uh, here's one of my favorites. I got to play this one. And you actually, is this the one you did a... Um, a breakdown on was a couple of was no, one of these a, shots it's right the one right below it uh this this one here yeah that one that one i did i actually threw it in the chat somebody had a a question on it earlier and so uh i i did a step-by-step -step animation for uh for motionographer and and so it's just a live recording of the beginning to the end with that one so Dude, that's it's cool. uh it's i think it's like oh, a couple hour couple hour long thing right but um yeah that's amazing. Shows shot. you everything I did. Used Hot 4D, used Dual Graph, um, <laughs> Octane, a All bunch of bunch stuff. of different stuff. So now uh, I have to show this too because you did a uh, tutorial series, uh, or not a series, it's one video, but you did a, a video on our um, uh, on our uh, website on Grayscale Gorilla, all about how to get this kind of balloon look, which I yeah. love. I love all these wrinkles and all this stuff that you built into this. Yeah, this, yeah. You can see like my work's like kind of all over the place. Like and and like I go through like various phases where I'm like super into one thing, and then I and then all of a sudden it just like changes again. Um, and so a lot of uh, stuff mm -hmm. that I, I do will be very type heavy, and then like obviously like the inflatable balloon series is like nothing like uh, m my uh, infected series or whatever, like where, you know, it's, it's gross. And I get a lot of people that, uh, that write me really nice comments about that. I know this like is, a, I know this is a while back, but I've always loved this series, this texture you built for um, this kind of grass look. We, Chris and I actually, uh, I think before we even met David, Chris and I would stare at this and go, we need to be able to make this. this yeah. 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 I Super think I remember cool. one of you guys telling me that oh, a while ago because yeah, that was from uh, 2012. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> but but you know nothing tricky about it. Just uh, you know basic uh, design principles and color theory, right? Just like having that monochromatic kind of thing going, and you know. Well, I figure um, 
Uh, let's check out your reel. I think we could play it through here. Uh, hopefully the frame rate and everything will be cool since we're doing this live, but uh, I'm just gonna full, full screen this. I think the audio should be hooked up as well, but let's check out your latest reel because I mean, it's new today. We gotta check it out. Here we go. Awesome. It was looking Thanks. good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, let me, uh, I'm going to link this up. You guys could go to lockedandloading.com. Check out the latest reel. I think it's at the top of the page, but uh, literally uploaded today, man. It's cool to see stuff that you just finished, you know, a week ago in there. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, like having that motion reel is so important uh, for all artists. I'm not just saying, like, talking about me. Um, and that's like another great thing, like, from this course. It's always like, you know, the best you ever are as a designer is like right at that moment. And so, you know, this course like forces you, you get really great animation work out there and then you can instantly throw that up onto your reel. You know, you want to show that stuff off. Yeah. There's been um, some of the projects that people will take and, and, and actually turn into stuff for the reel, which is cool. They'll, a lot of times they'll, they'll do the basic part for the class and get critique and then get that feedback. It looks like from you, and then go back and, and redo it for their reel or maybe put a different logo in it or try something a little bit bigger, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, let me flip back to the screen and uh, show you guys a couple more things uh, I wanted to show you while while I had the screen up. Uh, the, this one first is the – this is where you can go learn more about the course. Uh, it starts April 10th, which is this Monday. Um, we got David teaching – over six, uh, well, it's exactly six weeks, uh, but tons of hours of uh, training and live shows uh, to teach you animation. So um, it starts April 10th. It'll go through May 24th. I think it's the last show. We got some videos here and some other stuff to show you a little bit more about what's going on. And for anybody else, too, that wants to get started keyframing um, and, and they want to you know get started today, you could actually go sign up for our Introduction to Cinema 4D course and uh, Chris built a um, its own video. It's right here called Animation. Now he shows you a couple different ways to animate, not just with keyframes, but uh, I think he shows you a couple things with MoGraph and things like that as well. But he does jump into the timeline and start to show you uh, some of the basics of how to get started animating. And if that um, is interesting to you, if you jump in there, you're like, I could do this. I know I could do this. Head over to the Animation Fundamentals course and uh, learn a little bit more and join us for this uh, class. And really not just learn the, the technical stuff of the timeline, but the actual animation principles that help make your stuff come to life. So uh, excited to get that going, man. Let me, um, let me head back and set this up with our faces here. And let's do a little bit of... Uh, Q and A. That's not it. Here we go. There you are. All right. I'm going to take you off the screen sharing too, David. And if anybody has questions, uh, from the chat room, uh, we'd love to, uh, maybe answer a few of those. Now we got, uh, 15 minutes until Chris starts ask GSG here on Twitch. And, uh, yeah, a ton of people here today. I really appreciate you guys showing up. Uh, thanks for those of you who came from, um, uh, the newsletter and maybe from Instagram who, who saw me on Instagram yelling about this double feature. That'd be fun to see. Uh, also, if you guys have any questions, put it in, um, put it in the chat room here and we'll get right to it. So it looks okay. like David, you're answering. 
You're answering I got a questions, questions already. Questions too that uh, that I can that I can I've been copying as they've been going that I haven't been able to actually answer while we were talking. Yeah, um, man, go ahead. Acreikery, oh, man, that's gonna be a bad one. Uh, Acreikery wanted to know: uh, Will we get to character animation? This this course is not a character animation course, but the the principles that you learn are actually derived from uh, character animation. So you're going to be learning all all these kind of principles that you'll be able to two characters but we're going to focus more on how we can apply these to motion design and motion graphics to make our animations come to life equally uh to a character animation you know um it's really cool when you go through that process when it's not actually a character but you're giving like a basic object that feel uh, uh and that emotion that a character would have but without like facial expressions and and, and different body language and things like that so it's pr it's pretty cool um, yeah, I think that um, just to just to add to that, I think um, once I realized that you could put the animation principles on top of a logo and had to help a logo have character, just like Mickey Mouse would have a character, you know, like once mm -hmm. that once that went off in my head, I was like, oh, this is why I need to learn it. Because up until then, I was like, I don't need to learn all these animation things. That's for like animating characters, which I'm not interested in. But as soon as I saw that overshoot and squatch and stretch and all these things applied to a logo made it more like gave it more character and made it look more fun and all the things that I wanted. Uh, that's when the light bulb went off. So yeah, thanks for uh, mentioning that. And yeah, yeah, you had another question too. Um, yeah, th there's a few more in here. Uh, Yada glow said, uh, uh, I actually don't know what this one means. <laughs> he said, uh, at, at C4D live and David, uh, how is your name born? I'm not sure what that means, but, uh, my name is pronounced bro door. And uh, and I was born in Philadelphia, <laughs> so, so we'll, we'll answer both of those. Um, Jake uh, Jake said Jake Bartman said uh, awesome reel DB. What's your least favorite clip in the reel? Uh, my least favorite clip is um, uh, the the Verizon stuff and anything client related. I'm I'm in like I, I, funny enough. I heard Beeple talking about. He's like you know you go to my website and you you don't see uh, like any of the commercial or professional work that I've done. Like, I don't put any of that. It's just all my own personal stuff. Cause that's the stuff I like. And, and so that's yeah. like, so I just want to totally clean my work out of, uh, of having client work at all pretty much. So that would probably be my least. Yeah. Well, and, and probably, um, that's what, draw clients to you as well as they see all this fun stuff you're making you're like we want to work with this like there's a lot less spinning logos on this reel <laughs> yeah for sure and that's what we talked about in the uh, in the in the podcast that i was on a couple of weeks ago was uh how clients seem to be attracted to me for my side projects and not for like some showy title sequence or something like that they're like no they're and even if they're not related they, they see like uh, some weird creature I make or like inflatable balloon series. And they're like, could you make us like this, like intro to our logo or something? I'm like, okay, cool. Heck yeah. They're not like, oh, we love that. That stars power title sequence that you did. Could you work on our logo? It's never, it doesn't happen. It's so crazy. So yeah, the, the side project is so important. Yeah, I agree. Um, well, let's see. Uh, let me, I, I should, I should have been looking for more questions, but yeah. Throw it in the uh, chat room here, and either I've, David and I I've will, got another one. We'll um, find it. White Sev one or Wheat Sev one. He said, uh, she said, will you also cover some materials? So we, 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 we don't dive into materials a whole lot, but what we do is we do uh, get into more, a little bit more compositing and things like that. And so it's kind of a rounded course, you know, from from beginning to having something that would be a final production kind of thing. And so we'll, we go over some lighting, we go over making different uh, landscapes or studio scenes, uh, and then uh, how we can like composite this to kind of like really round it out. Um, but I wouldn't say this is like a super in-depth about like materials or compositing, but we go through that stuff for sure. We can't, we can't not when we want to build like that final project. Right. Yeah. I, I, I see how you set some of those up with the, building the final project, you know, it's not just gray renders, right? You're like, yeah. you're doing the textures and the lighting and showing how all that stuff comes together. Yep. Um, cool. We got, uh, we got a general question maybe for the podcast. That's a, that's a good one. Wondering how you handle clients, try to micromanage your whole project. I think, um, I think, yeah, we may have to save that for a podcast, but we got to get you speaking of the podcast. We got to get you back on the podcast. Yeah. I'm always in, always Dude, in. 
that was a fun one. Oh, I loved it. Um, let's see how, let's see other questions. Yeah. Any other questions for David, his reel or the course? We'd love to, uh, uh, let's see here. Let me see. I got to highlight the green ones. Gum, Gumbo Incorporated. Love that name. Uh, how much pose morph is used for the puffing elements in David's work? Um, can you speak about the, how you animate some of those, um, puffing yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, it, that's a great question. Um, we actually talked about it on the podcast that I was on on, on GSG um, because originally I actually was watching Chris's uh, Ask GSG live, which comes on in 10 minutes. Uh, I was watching that and he was breaking down and, and he showed a technique um, for moving the faces of polygons and rounding them and stuff like that. And that was originally how I was doing it. And um, it, it and, you know, but I use this technique, it looked nothing like what he was creating. And I think that's like the, the, the key thing to take away. It's okay to like figure out the technique someone does and apply it to something that's original in your own thought. Um, but yeah, the, what I'm doing now is I'm actually doing pretty much all pose morphine uh, and, and, and relying on like delay effectors to make them feel like they're simulated, right? Because they, they kind of have that, that bulginess and kind of that, mm. that, that follow through and overlap animation and that secondary animation and things like that, that kind of make them feel a little bit more uh, like natural and realistic. And so, yeah, that's just all pose more from between two hand sculpted pieces of geometry and, uh, and then throwing that stuff on there. Yeah. And that reminds me of the way, the way that you said that, that you use pose morph and, and some of the uh, kind of formula based animation stuff. What I like about the way that you said that is now that you know the principles of animation, you can actually rely on some of the things that cinema does on its own. Things like, uh, you know, the bounce effector or the, um, uh, the like the delay effector. Those kind of things yep. you can actually apply with more, um, like with more art if you understand the principles behind it. Instead of just throwing it on there because it looks cool, you can actually go okay, what am I trying to accomplish? And should I keyframe it or should I use signal or should I use a bounce or, you, you know you what I mean? It. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's a really key part of it. And I always have to remind myself of that too. Same with design, same with all these things is once you once you learn them and you learn how stuff look is supposed to look and, all, and learn the language of animation, you could then apply all these other things like dynamics in a more clear way. Yeah, no, that you, you nailed it exactly. And I stress that point all the time too. So yeah, perfect. Well said. Um, let's see here. Got some, uh, remind, uh, I'm just looking through the chat room here and if you're watching this, um, later on, uh, and, and the chat room's not here, I, I wanted to thank you guys for watching and, um, and if you guys want to link to the class and try to register before this, um, get started, I'll put it in the description as well if you're watching this anywhere else other than on uh, Twitch. But uh, for those of you on Twitch, I'll put another link. Um, cool, cool. Good, good. Uh, see, I love this uh, with the live shows. People are actually answering each other's questions too. I always love when that happens. Yeah. And um, so we have about seven minutes until Chris uh, jumps on for Ask GSG. And um, got some texture questions too so before we uh wrap up here where can people learn more about your work and what you've been up to um so i mean on, on my site you know i try to keep things posted uh and keeps everything up to date i mean obviously my instagram that's that's where and instagram and twitter i think are, are the two places that i get to show like that work in progress stuff uh that i won't post like to my main website right but like it's more for artists and people who are interested in care so you know if you want to keep up with like that stuff and i've got like a bunch of like uh time lapse stuff that that like i'm about to throw up on my my twitter and my instagram and it's stuff that you know if you're a designer if you're an artist and animator that maybe you'd be more interested to see like it's like cool final product's great but i'd love to see just like a time lapse of of, of that too to you know figure out some techniques and idea and learn from it so Kind of all that stuff, you know? So yeah, Instagram, Twitter, my lockedandloading.com, all those things. Nice, man. Well, thanks for hopping on. And if anybody out there wants to join David for the course, it's going to get started this Monday. Um, and I should tell you too, it's, um, so we have obviously the six weeks of video training. 
Um, and then this, the, also the six weeks of live shows where David goes and you know picks out a few of the select works to kind of break down and, and critique and also answer your questions uh, during that live show. But we also have a, a private Slack channel that's included in this. And we found yeah. that people, a lot of the students will uh, kind of stick around even after the class because they met people in that Slack channel that have you know been able to answer their questions even after the 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 course uh, is is through. So we found you know friendships and people working together after the fact after some of these classes. So the Slack channel I think is a huge part of um, this course. And you know I wanted to explain too why why we started making this a year ago. Um, we've put out over eight years of, of tons of tutorials on YouTube, on Vimeo, in, in the way to try to teach as much as we could and get it out into the world and say, if, if I know it, you should know it, and just record, record, record. And what we found was that I've been, I've been ignoring one of the main things that I talk about um, and, and one of the main reasons I think people learn the fastest, which is when you're in the same room with other people that are into what you're into, that's the fastest you learn. At least that's the fastest I've learned. And by watching other people, that's also the fastest they learn. And for many of us, we can't physically be in the same room with a bunch of other people that are into the same stuff that we're into. So we found by organizing a course around something that everybody in that course wants to learn. We actually help teach better in that way. We actually make more connections. We're able to bring a group of people into a community and really focus on one thing, which is in this case, animation and Cinema 4D and the timeline and the animation principles. And when you do that, that's when the magic happens. Because you know, just watching whatever new tutorial comes out that stuff's amazing. We we still put out tutorials. That stuff's super helpful. But when you take a second and say, okay, I'm going to focus down on this one thing for six weeks, that's when, you know, that's when real learning starts to happen. And I, I forgot about that. So when we started building this, we're like, let's see if this works. I mean, let's get some people in a room that really want to learn this and just teach them as much as we can. And uh, it is, it's, it's been a huge success, over 220 people going through it, and we're about to launch the next one. So I wanted to thank you for helping build this as well. It's been really fun, man. Heck yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. And I love getting together with all the artists in that Slack group too. So, you know, can't can't speak any higher of it. And like, and we're all friends, you know, and like that's my, my favorite part is like such a small industry. And then when you start knowing people like that and like, you know, everyone still hits me up on there and, and DMs me on the Slack group too. And it's just like, it's just super fun, you know, to like, do a course and then like end as like friends and and I actually uh, went to some conferences in Australia and a couple of people that were in the course came up to me and hung out so I was I'm I, I love it you know it's great it's what an awesome community yeah thanks again man um yeah. well we got to roll out here pretty soon Chris is coming in uh any last questions in the uh in the Twitch page here thanks everybody again for showing up today um and let us know what you think about this format as well, this kind of interview format. I I didn't know if it would work really well over uh, Twitch, but it seemed to work out okay. Um, let us know what you think about this, and we could try to do a few more of these. And uh, don't forget that um, Chris is coming up here in a couple minutes, so get your Cinema 4D questions ready for another Ask GSG yeah. with Chris all the Wednesdays, almost all the Wednesdays. Actually, this season is wrapping up in the next month or two. Um Everyone's saying, everyone's saying thanks. <laughs> everyone's having fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. There's a few questions. You know, guys, feel free to hit me up too. You, I mean, even though we're running out and I don't want us to like bleed into uh, Chris's Ask GSG mm. because I want you guys to learn from that. But feel free to, to uh, DM me, you know, through my site. You can get my email there or Instagram or whatever. Like sh hit me up with emails. Like even if they're unrelated to the course or you just want to learn or hang out or chat about something, it doesn't have to end here. So. Yeah, that's a great. Um, I'll, I'll I'll say this too. If uh, you guys are watching uh, down the road and you have a question, or even in the next few days, you know this course will be closed and kicking off on Monday. So if you guys have any questions for the rest of the week or over the weekend uh, about the course, uh, hit us up on um, Twitter. You could hit us up there, Facebook, 
um, and we'll be there trying to uh, answer some questions. Yep. So um, we should wrap up and uh, give give Chris the floor. Thanks again for yeah. everybody showing up, and uh, thank you, David, for uh, answering some questions and talking about animation, man. Of course, I love it. So much fun. It's been fun. I'll uh, put the link one more time if anybody's interested. We'd love to have you in the course. Uh, and if you have any questions, don't forget to hit us up. And with that, uh, let's let's wave. Let's do the wave and, uh, oh, and yeah. get out of here. Join me <laughs> on the wave. Thanks again, David. Sweet. Yeah. We'll see, see you, you soon, guys. man. Thanks for checking it out. Bye, everybody. And then there's the awkward moment when I got to find the off button. Okay, there we go. Bye, friends. <laughs> see you guys.